Most of us enjoy a drink, the odd pint after work, kicking off your shoes and having a relaxing glass of wine or two on the sofa. But the thing is, many probably don't realise just how quickly these drinks can add up. And many people are not aware of how low the safe limits for alcohol consumption are. Men can safely drink up to 21 units of alcohol per week. Women can drink 14 units. But how many people know how many units they drink per week? Do you know? A unit is defined as 10 millilitres of pure alcohol. And handily, many of the traditional measures of drinks are based around units. A pint of normal strength lager, 4%, is two units. Single shot of whiskey, one unit. Small 125 milliliter glass of wine, one unit. Which is all pretty digestible. But much of our drinking these days is done outside of pubs and we pour our own measures. So often a glass of wine can really be three units. Let's say we're making a gin and tonic or something, that could be two or three units. Which is how it's easy to slip into a dangerous drinking habit. If you drink three cans of strong lager, three times a week, as a man, you are at the upper limits of safe drinking. And as a woman, you are running a high risk of damaging your body. And excessive drinking doesn't only affect you physically. It can also have a negative impact on your family life and your work life. The local authority and local health board employ between them thousands of staff. As an employer, we have a duty of care to ensure that all our staff are happy and well. We also have to ensure that our staff are productive in work. To help us achieve this, we have put in place a policy regarding alcohol and substance misuse, which has been designed to help employees who are drinking too much and to protect the council's and health board's reputation. Many people who have a dangerous drinking pattern do not realise the risks that they are taking with their health. When we've had a skinful, Becoming sober means your liver is removing the alcohol from your bloodstream. Sustained excessive drinking causes damage to the liver, which can be fatal. Oh. 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 A healthy liver can dispose of around one unit of alcohol per hour. But here's the thing. Sleep does not speed the liver up. Which means if you've been out on a pub crawl and you've had 10 pints of lager, there is no way that getting eight hours of sleep is gonna mean that you wake up sober. If, which means if you've been out and you're in work the next day, the chances are you're going to be in work whilst under the influence of alcohol. Which is a disciplinary offence. <sighs> the key thing to remember is alcohol is a poison. So the liver has to deal with that, produces an enzyme to break the poison down. But ultimately, people can have liver damage and be completely and utterly unaware of it because the liver is quite good at regenerating itself. So the common things we'll see are fatty liver, then alcohol-induced hepatitis, and ultimately cirrhosis of the liver, which for most people, it can be something you're gonna end up dying from. Not just that, but you could be breaking the law. Many of us in the course of our duties are required to drive, either to get to work or as part of our job. Of course, it is a criminal offence to drive whilst over the limit, and this could lead to you losing your driving licence. And if your job is dependent on you being able to drive, you could lose your job too. Even if you walk to work and don't have to drive as part of your job, coming into work still feeling the effects of the night before can impact seriously on your ability to do your job. If you're working in the health sector, it is important to realise the effect that drinking can have on your job. Excess drinking and the resulting hangover can seriously impair your ability to concentrate. You may, for example, be required to dispense medication with names that look and sound alike. Supplying the wrong medicine or the wrong strength 
can have consequences that could be very serious. But even on the smaller scale, care workers are required to work in very close proximity to their clients all day, and the smell of alcohol on your breath would not instill confidence in the person being cared for. There are plenty of situations where your job for the council or health board could involve using heavy and potentially dangerous equipment. Recycling plants, kitchens, gyms, all of these working environments contain equipment that if not used with the right care and attention could do serious harm. It isn't just alcohol misuse which causes problems at work and for the health of our employees. Illegal drugs and prescription drugs, if they're misused, affect the health and well-being of many, many people. In the South Wales Valleys, the abuse of anabolic steroids is widespread. <sighs> steroids are drugs which mimic the effect of the hormone testosterone. While many think that testosterone is a male hormone and oestrogen is a female one, they are both present in men and women in differing amounts. And it is the balance between the two which is important. So while many men abuse steroids because they develop muscle mass and they want to look more manly, taking steroids can cause the body to create more oestrogen to try and balance out the extra testosterone. This can lead to many medical problems including impotence and the development of breasts. As well as this, steroid abuse can cause liver damage and lead to increased aggression, commonly known as roid rage. Then there are all those other drugs, pills and powders which have all sorts of side effects. The Misuse of Drugs Act is their main piece of legislation that applies to drug use and drug users. If an employee is found in possession of illegal drugs, this is considered gross misconduct and is punishable by instant dismissal. The employer is under a legal obligation to inform the police, which could result in criminal proceedings. So our Class A drugs, they're the ones like heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and you're looking at seven years as your maximum penalty for possession and life imprisonment for supplying. Then you've got what is seen as your mid-range ones, so your Class B, and you're looking at five years for possession and 14 years for supplying. Your Class C's, some of those are drugs that are available on prescription but become illegal if you haven't got a prescription, and two years is your maximum penalty for possession, and again, 14 years for supplying. If you have concerns about your drinking or use of other substances, your employer will make every effort to be sympathetic and to offer support. If an employee thinks they have a problem with an alcohol or substance misuse problem, um, they should really get in touch with their line manager. This will be totally confidential and that's the best way for them to seek help. If they don't want to actually speak to their line manager, then they should get in touch with their occupational health um, team and they will be able to again deal with them sympathetically and in confidence. Put simply, no matter what job you do, you won't be able to do it properly if you're under the influence of alcohol or other substances. And in doing so, you run the risk of losing your job or worse. Please take time to familiarise yourself with the policy on drug and alcohol misuse. It's there to protect you.